Now, let's talk about how far we can go with wireless connections, introducing the link budget. A link budget is pretty much like a household budget. It tells me how much I start with, what I'm spending or losing along the way, and then what I have left at the end of the month or the end of the journey of the wireless signal from A to B. That's in short a link budget. And in order to use it, we'll need a little mathematical help. We'll introduce a unit called the dB, the decibel. And we're doing this just because it's practical. What is the decibel? It's a logarithmic way of expressing the relation between two powers, you could say. Example. You have an output power at an access point, and then you measure what arrives on the other side. So you have two powers, you put them in relation, divide one by the other, take the logarithmic, that in short gives you the decibel. Why are we doing this? Because nature behaves like that. When a radio wave gets attenuated, gets weakened in material, say it loses one-tenth with every meter, then you can calculate after one meter you have one-tenth, after the second meter you have a hundredth, after the third meter you have just the thousandth part of it. So it goes ten, hundred, thousand. Same by the way in animal populations, if they multiply by 10 every year, 10 the one year, 100 the next, 1000 the next. Now this is best expressed if we're using this logarithmic form, the decibel, because then we can just add decibels instead of having to multiply all the way. And this is just handy, it's practical for making these calculations. That's the reason you see the decibel, the dB all over the place. Um, you don't have to memorize the mathematical formula. Um, what is good to memorize is things like 3 dBs means twice the power, 10 dB means an order of magnitude more, and then 20 dB is two orders of magnitude, 30 dB, three orders of magnitude, and so forth. You also find dBs that are relative to something else, for example, the dBm is a dB relative to the milliwatt. One milliwatt defines zero dBm. And then the same rule, 10 milliwatt would be 10 added, that's 10 dBm's. 100 milliwatt, a number you often find in Wi-Fi as the upper limit you can do. That's then 20 dBm and so forth. Similarly, in antenna descriptions, you often see the dBi. The dBi is dB relative to an isotropic antenna, which is just a theoretical concept. An isotropic antenna would be one that radiates in all directions with the same strength. You can't build such an antenna. It's an idea rather than a reality. And then you describe a directed antenna and saying it has so and so many dBi's. It's that much stronger in a certain direction than this antenna that radiates into all directions. That's the dBi. So you find often numbers like an access point is described as doing 20 dBm's. You can say a cable has a certain loss. One meter of cable loses, for example, half a dB. You can say an amplifier amplifies by so and so many dB's. So you find them all over the place and they are our main tool for doing, our main 
trick, our main way of doing link budgets. Now, what's a link budget? It's just adding up gains and losses, as I said earlier, much as you do with a financial budget. You have something, you lose something, you win something. End of the day, you have something left, hopefully. We have two kinds of contributions to such a wireless link budget. There's things that we cannot change, and there's things we can change. The things we cannot change is just the loss because of the distance. And we'll look at that in a moment. And then there's things we can change. That's antennas, cables, amplifiers, if we have them, the output power, the receive sensitivity. So how much we're sending and how good we are in receiving that. That's things we can change. The part we can't change is the propagation over the distance in space. And at this point, we need to introduce a term, the line of sight. The line of sight, and that's where the word comes from, is probably easiest to imagine when we're just looking at our eyesight. If we can see something, we can see a mountain on the horizon, it's within our line of sight. If it's behind something, if it's hidden by another hill or mountain, well, then it's non-line of sight. Now, same concept for radio waves, just with a little difference because of the bigger wavelength. The radio line of sight is not just a thin line, as we can imagine the optical light. Um, it's more like a cigar shape or a straight banana shape, maybe. Um, it's, it's wide. It has a certain thickness because those wave fronts that we looked on earlier, they need to contribute to the signal arriving on the other side. It's not enough to just have a line. You need a certain space around it. We could go into detail here and talk about Fresnel zones. That'll be a more detailed talk somewhere else. But important to know the concept, line of sight, non-line of sight, and be aware you need a little bit more than just the absolute straight line. Now, if we have line of sight, if there's no obstacle, if there's no mountain, no trees, no building, then the loss of signal along the way is described by free space loss. Also find the term path loss. And it's pure geometry. It's, it only, its only reason is that you produce an output power at some point, and this output Power needs to spread and fill a larger and lar larger area, pure geometry. So the further I'm going, the less power per surface unit I will receive simply because power needed to spread out. That's all that's behind the path loss, the free space loss. We can write this down in formulas and it depends on frequency and the distance, obviously. You don't need to memorize the exact formula. When you need it, find it in literature or this presentation. Uh, what's useful to memorize is take one fixed frequency, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, for example, and memorize one kilometer is a loss of minus 100 dB. You can check this put the values into this formula, you get roughly this one kilometer minus 100. And then you can just add for each order of magnitude, that's another 20 dB loss. And if you want to change frequency, well, if you roughly go to something which is 10 times the frequency, you get that same factor 20 of more loss. So the same dB logic here, just with a factor 20. Keep that in mind. The factor 20 comes from now, it's not only a 
distance that matters, but actually a surface area. So we get a factor two to the 10 that we already had in the definition of the, uh, the decibel. The parts we can change in a link budget. First of all, the output power. So this is what the radio outputs brings into the antenna on the sending side, on the originating side of our signal. And you will find typical values for Wi-Fi is 20 dBms, 100 milliwatt. That is largely due to the regulations. I talked about ISM bands for earlier, and you have limits, maximum power you're allowed to use. And in most places for Wi-Fi these days, that would be the 20 dBms. Then on the other side, you have the device listening, and we call that the receive sensitivity. It means how good you are in um, hearing what's being said. Remember, in a communication, it's not enough for one person to scream really loud. You also need the other person to listen very carefully. And the better we can listen, the longer the connection we can make. So receive sensitivity is crucial. And it typically for Wi-Fi equipment is in the range of somewhat in the high minus 90 dBms. 95, 98. Remember here, lower is better. The less you need in order to still understand, the better you are in listening, the better for your connection. So a lower value, minus 98, is better than minus 92. Mobile phones typically have radios in them that can do like minus 85. That's not as good as a professional access point can do. Lastly, of course, antennas. That's something we can do something about and we'll be looking at those later. Here at this point, the important question, so how much do we need to still have a signal? And this is quite easy when we're looking at what we just said. We said receivers have a sensitivity. I said mobile phones maybe minus 85. So the, the symbols we're often seeing on mobile phones, on laptops, whether it's bars or the symbols you're seeing here, they indicate some dBms. And roughly we can say in order to have a working connection to a mobile phone or a laptop, something like minus 70, minus 75, perhaps dBm is needed. And the reason for that is the received sensitivity. We still need a little bit of margin. We can't go all the way to the minimum received sensitivity. We need a little bit of space still, whether that's five or 10 dBm's, that depends on how stable we want the connection. But rule of thumb, minus 70, 75 dBm is the very, very low limit. Minus 50, that's a very good signal. Some link budget examples. You can list these things row by row. Here's the example we just talked about, a hotspot, output power, 20 dBm's. A medium size, relatively weak antenna, 5 dB I. Uh, on the other side, the receiver, just a very small, maybe an inbuilt antenna with 2 dB I's. And you get over a distance of one kilometer, you get a connection that just about works. It's just enough to get through. Not a lot of margin left, but it would probably work. Here's another example for a point-to-point -point link. Now we're going long distance, 100 kilometers. Uh, that's a loss of minus 140 dBs that we have to make up for at some point. We are making up for that by using strong antennas on both sides. 
plus 25 dBi's. We'll be looking at such antennas, that is strong directional antennas. And we again get a working connection with the little comment that you should check whether you're allowed to do 20 dBm's output plus a strong antenna. Are you allowed to do that? In most countries, no, because the output power looks at the sum of the radio output and what the antenna does. That together gives you the, the upper limit, and that in most places is the 20 dBm's, including the antenna. 